We're now going to look at empirical formulas. Basically, we want to take these percentages that we have and figure out what the formula for the compound would be. But we're going to find the empirical formula. And empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of the elements in the compound. So, for example, let's suppose that our actual formula was C2H4. The empirical would be CH2. 2 to 4, 1 half. 1 to 2, 1 half. It's the lowest whole number ratio of the elements in that compound. That's an empirical formula. So, we're going to start off with a 100 gram sample of sodium and sulfur and oxygen where we have percentages. Now, in this particular problem, they give us the 100 grams, but honestly, I would always make it out of 100 grams because it makes the math easier. In reality, these percentages are the same percentages regardless of how big or how small the sample is. So we should always do it out of 100. So if I have 32.38%, I can write that as 0.3238 as a decimal. Now times my 100 grams, and that's going to give me 32.38 grams for the sodium. Now the sulfur, we have 0.2265 times the 100 grams. And of course, that's just 22.65 grams. And then the oxygen, 0.4499 times the 100 grams. And now we have uh, 44.99 grams. This will always be true. When I do it out of 100 grams, the uh, percentages will match the gram amounts. And honestly, I don't really need to do this part here. I can simply make that correspondence 32.38%, 32.38 grams, and so forth. Now, I have gram amounts. I need to turn those into mole amounts for each of the different elements. So first off for the sodium, 32.38 grams times one mole over, uh, since it's sodium, that's about 23 grams. And that'll give me 1.408 moles of sodium. Okay, uh, next 22.65 grams times one mole. Remember, anytime we're going to moles, it's basically a divide problem. This time it's 32 grams, and I get uh, 0.708 moles of sulfur. And then 44.99 grams times one mole divided by 16 grams, and I get uh, 2.812 moles of oxygen. So now I've turned all the grams into moles. <coughs> that's really, once I have grams, that's the big, that's the first big step. Turn them into moles, and of course these numbers I got off the periodic table, uh, and I uh, used the rounded whole number amounts for the different elements. The next step is to do mole ratios between the different elements. Since I have three elements here, I'm going to do two ratios. And the key is I'm going to pick 
uh, the smallest one and do the other two in comparison to that. So I'm going to do sodium over sulfur and then oxygen over sulfur for my two comparisons. And I always make the same smallest one uh, the denominator for both. So first I'm going to do sodium to sulfur so 1.408 moles of sodium to 0 0.708 moles of sulfur that comes out to be 1.989 which is about 2, which would be a ratio of 2 to 1. So what that tells me is for every uh, 1 atom of sulfur, the compound would have 2 uh, atoms of sodium, or 1 mole of sulfur would be 2 moles of sodium. Okay, so now we have to do uh, the oxygen one, and so we have our 2.812 moles of oxygen over again the sulfur 0 0.708 moles of sulfur this one ends up being 3.972 which is about 4 so that would be a 4 to 1 ratio so that would mean <coughs> for every one sulfur four oxygens or every one mole of sulfur four moles of oxygens that would then between these two mole ratios give me a empirical formula of Na2SO4 and so there is my empirical formula. Now a couple things to note. Order does matter. We put the metals first. We put oxygen last. The sulfur in between. Note from the subscripts that I have two sodium, one sulfur, if it's not there it's a one, and four oxygens. So those are matching those ratios I did before. 2 to 1 for the sodium to the sulfur, 4 to 1 for the sulfur to the oxygen. If you were to check your ion sheet, you would see that SO4, a sulfate ion, has a negative 2 charge. Na has a plus 1 charge. So I would need two of these to cancel out one of those to make the whole compound neutral. <coughs> now you might say to yourself, well, why couldn't I just done that and not do all this calculation stuff? But of course, I did not know ahead of time that these were going to be the actual ratios that uh, were in the compound. Also, if you look on your ion sheet, you'll note that there's an SO4 and an SO3, uh, and there are other ones that are very close to each other, which would all give us different percentages and different gram amounts. Uh, but I need to go through this process uh, for figuring out what things are. You will also see in the next example that when it gets to um, molecular compounds in which they're all nonmetals and therefore I can't necessarily use the ion sheet uh, to, to help me, um, this process still works. Uh, further, I mentioned going to the ion sheet so that you can see how the formula makes sense. Metals, the nonmetals, charges all balance, and so it's kind of confirmation that all of my calculations came out appropriately. So, first, get to grams, second, go to moles, and then do your mole ratios. And once you have your mole ratios, that will tell you the amounts of each uh, element in the compound, put the metals first, oxygen last, and whatever else you have in between. All right, let's look at a second example now. We've got 10.15 gram sample, contains only phosphorus and oxygen. If the sample has 
433 grams of phosphorus. What is the empirical formula? Please note we already have gram amounts, so we're not going to have to switch from percentages to grams. However, they only told us the gram amount of the phosphorus. This formula is only going to have phosphorus and oxygen. So if this is the total, and that's the phosphorus, then I can simply subtract to get what the oxygen amount must be. And so I now have uh, gram amounts in both. <clears throat> so let's go to moles. First the phosphorus, 4.433 grams times uh, one mole over 31 grams. There are 31 grams of phosphorus in one mole. And that gives me 0 0.143 moles of phosphorus. Next, the oxygen, 5.717 grams times one mole. Oxygen is 16 grams. So this gives me a 0 0.35 seven moles of oxygen. By the way, it's important, uh, you might feel like, you know, it's unnecessary, but by putting, you know, the P for phosphorus and O for oxygen over here and over here, I am keeping straight what it is I'm looking at. Um, labeling, a little extra labeling will really help save you in the long run. All right, so I have only two uh, elements in this one, so now we can do our mole ratio. Again, the bigger one on top, 0.357 moles of the oxygen over 0.143 moles of the phosphorus. That equals 2.497 uh, that's not close to a whole number, but it is pretty close to 2.5, which is a ratio of 5 to 2. So, oxygen on top, that means I need 5 oxygens to every 2 phosphorus, so my empirical formula will be P2O5. Again, the, the coefficients in my compound have to match what the ratio between the mole amounts in the sample are to the nearest whole numbers. And so 2.5, that's 5 over 2. If it was uh, 1.5, that would be 3 over 2. Sometimes there are other uh, fractional amounts uh, that are possible, but usually the most common ones are it's going to come out to a whole number or it'll come out to something in which it's like 3 to 2 or 5 to 2 kind of things. So in the first example we had percentages, we had to turn them into grams, get our moles and then do mole ratios. In the second one we pretty much already had the gram amounts so we could go directly to moles. We do our mole ratio again, smaller one on the bottom and then think of that in terms of the nearest whole number fraction that we can have and very important keep straight oxygen's on top so the five goes with the oxygen five uh, atoms of oxygen to the two atoms of phosphorus or if you want five moles of oxygen to every two moles of phosphorus for this compound Okay, now we're going to look at carbon and hydrogen. Again, we're back to a percentage, but in this case, they only gave us one percentage. And so the question might be, well, how do I get the other? Well, if this has only got carbon and hydrogen in it, then there's only two things. Therefore, the rest of it has to be hydrogen. So I can simply take my 100%, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5
subtract the 82.658%, which will give me 17.342% hydrogen. And again, the two have to add up to 100, so I can always subtract the one to find the other one. All right, since I have my percentages, just like before, I can turn those into grams because I'm just going to assume, even though it doesn't say it anywhere in the problem, I'm just going to assume that it's out of 100 grams. Oops, that's a percent. Times 100 grams equals 82.658 grams. And this is the reason for doing that is I can take those percents out of 100 and now I have my gram amounts. Now if they give me the gram amounts like they did in problem two right off the bat, I don't need to worry about this. But if they don't give me the gram amounts, if they give me percentages, this is the easiest way to get to the gram amounts. Now, just like before, go to moles. So for carbon, one mole has 12 grams. And so I have 6.888 moles of carbon and uh, hydrogen of course it's just one gram so the math there is easy 17.342 grams is 17.342 moles when it's hydrogen okay now we'll do our mole ratio bigger one on top so the 17.342 moles of hydrogen and the 6.888 moles of carbon that comes out to 2.52 which again is pretty close to 2.5 which means a 5 to 2 ratio therefore my formula is C2H5 Now again, order does matter for all of our CH compounds. If you think back to when we were doing balancing, all of our CH compounds start with this, the carbon first and have the hydrogen second. And so again, going back to here, hydrogen over carbon, so five hydrogens to every two carbons, C2H5 is my empirical formula. <coughs> all right, last example. This time we just have the gram amount, so I don't have to worry about going from percentages. I can go right to the moles. So first for my carbon, I have 34.25 grams times one mole over 12 grams. And this comes out to 2.854 moles of carbon. I have 5.75 grams of hydrogen and again one gram per mole so I get 5.75 moles of hydrogen. So do my mole ratio, uh, bigger one on top, 5.75 mo uh, moles of the hydrogen over the 2.854 moles of the carbon equals 2.01, which is about two, which would be a ratio of two to one. So this says I need two hydrogens to every one carbon. Therefore, this empirical formula would be CH2. And of course, you know, the whole point of this is, you know, I can have samples in a lab in which I know the percentages or I know the actual mass amounts, and then I can figure out 
what the compounds should look like based on the idea that every different compound, this actually goes back to Dalton, you know, whole number ratios between the elements in a compound, that every different compound of the same elements will have different percentages, and so I can figure out what the formula might be. Now, these are empirical formulas, and if I go back to uh, what I had mentioned at the top, empirical formulas are the whole no, uh, lowest whole number ratio of the formula. And the example I gave before was I said, hey, if we started with C2H4, then that would go to CH2. CH2 is the empirical. This is called the molecular formula. So molecular formula, empirical formula. And as you can see, the only difference is the numbers here are a multiple of what they are there. <clears throat> and doing what we've done throughout this page of figuring out the empirical formulas, we could find out the molecular formula if we had one more piece of information. In this case, if I think about molar masses for the CH2, I have 12 grams from the carbon plus 2 grams from the two hydrogens, and so I have 14 grams is my molar mass. Over here, I have 24 grams from the two carbons plus 4 grams from the four hydrogens, and so that would be 28 grams for its molar mass. If I then compare the two molar masses, 28 grams over the 14 grams, notice that that comes out to 2. Just like these are double the numbers, the subscripts I had over here. So 1 and 2 became 2 and 4. And so if I have one extra piece of information, the molar mass of the actual formula, once I have the empirical, I can then use uh, that ratio of molar masses to figure out what the molecular formula will be. Now, we're not going to do that right now, but that's a direction that we could go to. And basically, it's just one extra step. Look at the comparison. They would have to tell me this part, and then I could compare it to what the empirical formula's molar mass would be that ratio would tell me how to basically double or triple or quadruple the actual uh, molecular formula because, again, just to em emphasize, CH2 is the empirical for C2H4, C3H6, C4H8. All of these would be molecular formulas that all have the same empirical. And so having that one extra piece of information allows me to go from the empirical to actually which molecular formula would be the right amount. <clears throat> and that'll do it for finding empirical formulas. <clears throat>